What we've done so far, without specifically defining the word, is I am sure by now you understand what's meant by surrender. It doesn't mean you're surrendering to somebody. It's not somebody else's will superimposed on top of yours. It doesn't mean you're a weakling. I surrender, I give up, I don't want to fight. It doesn't mean you're surrendering your marriage or marrying. It doesn't mean you're surrendering your job or working. It doesn't mean anything like that. That's why I refuse to define surrender in the beginning. Surrender is very, very subtle and it's very, very powerful. And you will find out that it is the entire spiritual journey. What surrender is, as we've discussed it, is you are in a predicament. It's called reality. Right now, where almost all of us are, I'm leaving the masters out, is we are conscious and we are aware of what is unfolding in front of us. The world is coming in, we're experiencing it. The mind is reacting to the world that's coming in because we stored reactive triggers inside ourselves due to our past experiences. The heart is reacting to the reaction of the mind, or we have stored so much within our heart that it's leaking. It just comes up with stuff all by itself. It doesn't need the outside world to come in and stimulate. This is reality. This is what's going on. So you are in there overwhelmed at all times by this experience of releasing energies inside of you that most people know absolutely nothing about. And it's like a drowning person. I'm drowning. Well, while I'm drowning, I'm not very nice. While I'm drowning, I scream a little bit. While I'm drowning, I yell at people, help me, help me. I do all kinds of things while I'm drowning. If somebody swims to help me, I'll grab them. They may drown too. I'm not in charge of my actions. I'm not a rational human being. I'm not centered. I'm not clear. I'm drowning. And we are drowning inside. So what do you do when you're drowning? You try to grab something solid. That's what you do. You try to grab a, a floating board passing by. You try to grab anything you can in order to not sink. That is how almost everybody is living their lives. What are we grabbing? You're trying to grab on to form outside. If people will respect me and talk nicely to me, I won't be as, as caustic in here. If she'll love me instead of loving him and pay attention to me and, and say nice things to me and marry me, then not to mention marry me, like take vows and tell me she'll always be true to me. And so oh, that's pretty solid, right? Excuse me. Um, and you grab a hold of that and you hold on to it and you try to not drown until he or she goes out and does something that doesn't reinforce that. And then you drown, right? If you want to see how much you're clinging and holding on by trying to, to, to try to create a solidity inside via, via the outside world, see what happens when it's not the way you want. And what do you feel? Pain. You feel pain. You feel disturbance. You feel destruction. All these energies shift inside. That's right. Because what you have been doing is trying to build a place of solidity within your mind that you can hold on to. And as long as everything reinforces that, at least reasonably, you feel you're safe. You have distanced yourself from the core of the energies that you've stored inside by clinging to something else. That's how we live. That's what we do. And it doesn't work. So the first step that we discussed is when, not the first, first and last, is if you want to grow spiritually, if you want to have a nice life, if you don't want to feel you're always struggling with life, if you don't want to dread waking up in the morning, if you don't want a midlife crisis, what's a midlife crisis? I've been building and doing and clinging and fighting and doing half my life because I want to be okay and I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I got the kids, I got the marriage, I got the job. I got perfectly reasonable to have a midlife crisis. I'm surprised everybody doesn't have them. You understand that? So we talked about what's the alternative, and that's what we're going to talk about in this session, strongly, deeply. What is the alternative? The alternative is to clean up the mess. You are drowning. Listen to me. There's an analogy I use, all right? You have been drowning. You're screaming. You're helping. The water's in your nose. The water's in your mouth. You're choking. Everything. Oh, my God, you're drowning. And I'm standing watching you. The water is six inches thick. 
You are laying deep, six inches deep. You are laying down, face down, nose in it, thrashing around. I'm drowning, I'm drowning. So all the water is splashing up into your face. That's all that's happening. There's no drowning. There's no reason to drown. You are causing yourself the entire problem that you are having. There is no problem. You are sitting on a planet spinning around the middle of absolutely nowheres. Look at your planet. So you won the lottery. You drop down into this phenomenal planet that's always exciting and challenging and growthful and colorful and shapes and sounds and unbelievable. And what do you do? You suffer. Why? It's not the planet. It's not that. It's the fact that you have this stuff stored inside of you. And how I put it, different people have hobbies of collecting different things. Some collect spoons from all over the world, teacups, stamps, coins. You collect bad experiences. And that's the truth. That's what you made your hobby. I'm going to collect every bad experience I ever had and keep it inside of me on display so that it can continue bothering me. All right? That's the only problem. That's the problem. If you keep doing that, you're going to collect more and more experiences throughout your life and it will get heavier and heavier and harder and harder. So the answer is the willingness to let go of this stuff that you have built up inside of you. Then you will not be drowning. It's not a matter of what do I do because I'm drowning. You won't be drowning. I've explained to you, there is an energy flow that flows up inside of you. Most of you don't know too much about it yet. Some of you do, you've had experiences. If you will practice what we're talking about, every single one of you, this energy flow will become a totally natural thing to you, just like your breath or your heartbeat. It's something you actually experience, it's real. The energy flows up, it can't make it past your blockages. Therefore, it manifests exactly in accordance to the blockages it hits. And that's what you now experience as your normal state, right? It's not a normal state. It's the state that comes because these are the blockages you stored. And so you feel a certain amount of fear, a certain amount of anxiety, a certain amount of tension, a certain amount of love. It all comes up. That is literally the man manifestation of how the energy is flowing around your blockages. That's what ends up painting your aura. That's where it comes from. A great being, the auras don't look like that. They're pure light, shine, oh my God. <laughs> They're pure light, shining, beaming in all directions. The, the size of, you know, yours is around your body, theirs would encompass the town. And that's the truth, all right? It's very, very, very beautiful. I don't like to, I don't get into psychic things, I don't need any of that, but it ties it all in too. So the question is, are you going to tolerate that you are making your life hell, that you are causing yourself to drown, you're causing yourself to have emotional problems, you're causing yourself to not be happy, and then you're going outside and demanding that the world be somehow that you made up, that if it's that way, I'll be okay. No, you won't. It's that simple.